Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, here we talk about personal development, personal finance, minimalism, and life in general. Today I would like to talk about one of my most favorite books, which has been around for over 100 years and has been transforming millions of people's lives around the world. If you are an avid reader and into self-development types of book, you might already know which one I'm talking about. Yes, is this one as a man thing? Do you know that this book is inspired by a verse in the Bible from the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7? As a man think in his heart, so is he. That pretty much sums up the whole main point of the book. This book is a combination of years of thought and meditation, and James Allen gathered his insight into a short book of less than 70 pages. This book was one of the first in the self-help movement and it aimed to provide universal truths of life simply to allow everyone to understand. Ellen focused on providing insights into the ability of a person's thoughts to shape that person's life. What I got from this book is our thoughts, not circumstances alone, create our reality. According to Ellen, our thoughts are the roots of our actions and these actions turn into our patterns that eventually shape our characters. This is why if you don't believe that you can succeed, you tend to give up easily because your actions reflect your belief since you expect little of yourself and that's what you will deliver. Another lesson I learned from this book is that we shape the world as much as the world shapes us. Yes, I understand that there are so many things we have no control in our life, like the weather, uh, our job, and even our kids. But we are always in control of how we react to what had happened to us. Instead of playing a victim role, what we can do is to get busy, to dig ourselves out of a bad situation and push ourselves very hard to move forward. And most likely, it was our thoughts and attitudes that we had in the first place that led us to our current situations. The last lesson I got from this book is that in order to live our life to our fullest potential, we need to cultivate our mind like a garden. We need to constantly pull weeds out, apply fertilizers, and plant new seeds in order to get better crops. If you are willing to put in the hard work of mastering your own mind, then you will be able to enjoy the fruits of your own effort for years to come. This book is basically about the law of attraction that I didn't know about till when the secret movie came out in 2006. I still can't believe that this book was published in 1903. It blows me away that over a century ago, during England's industrial time when maltreatment of the average worker was standard practice, someone had already written about the law of attraction and had it published. James Allen was truly a pioneer in the self-help movement. Here I am in 2020, still learning how to apply the law of attraction in my life, while I guess that certain philosophies are truly timeless. The basic principle here is that positive thoughts are the building blocks to your ideal life experiences and your well-being. The opposite is also true. Having destructive negative thoughts are the gateway to a disappointing life that is full of setbacks and challenges. In other words, if you want an amazing life, focus on cultivating good and wholesome thought and live your lives from within. This is definitely easier said than done. I make conscious decisions to cultivate positive thoughts on a daily basis and these are the things that I do to focus on being positive. Number one is to be grateful. The first thing I do when I wake up is to give thanks to God for blessing me with another beautiful day. Number two, meditation. The second thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to meditate. Meditating in the morning helps me to stay in touch with my spirit within before stepping into the outside world. It has helped me become less reactive throughout the day. It is truly a journey of merging my spirit with my body. Number three, be present. I find that if I am sad or angry, my focus is usually in the past. And if I am anxious, my focus is usually in the future. The more present I am, the more conscious I become, and the more I am able to stay positive. Number four, pay attention to what is currently happening to me. For example, if I am stuck at the same job, it means that 
I don't believe I can get something better than what I already have. In order to change my current situation, I need to go back to correct my thoughts to change my reality. Another example would be if I keep attracting the same jerk in my relationship, it means that I haven't forgiven my ex or I don't believe I deserve someone better. So in order to correct my reality, I need to forgive and correct my thoughts and move on. Number five, create a vision board. A vision board is an effective way to motivate me to take actions to achieve my ultimate goal. Without my vision board, I will never be able to materialize my dreams. Number six, say affirmations. I am statements are very powerful, especially when they are fueled by loving and grateful emotions. Throughout the day, I repeat I am statements to myself, like I'm loved and supported. Another one would be I am a magnet for divine abundance in the form of money, health, and happiness. Number seven, keep learning. A bored mind is a dangerous mind. That's why I keep my mind occupied with learning something new every day. After you start taking actions to cultivate positive thoughts in your mind, you will slowly see positive changes in your real life. It won't happen overnight because it takes time to replace negative thoughts with the positive ones. But sometimes, even with your positive thinking, you may still encounter different types of life challenges because that's life. But remember, as long as you are able to react in a positive and productive way, the outside world has to yield to your positive influence in the end. Life is a journey. Remember to live a little, laugh a little, and love a lot. This is not the type of book that you read once and toss it aside. This is the type of book that you would love to go back to from time to time to keep reminding yourself what you need to do in order to have a great life. In order to manifest anything in life, you need to first appreciate what you have and become the ideal person you would like to be and everything else will fall into place. I hope that you will find this video helpful and please share with your friends, like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, we will see you next time. Thank you.